Hello and welcome back to Reading the Periods, where we chat about and discuss all sorts of movies. My name is Gary O'Brien, and joining me today to discuss our Oscar predictions and snubs of 2024, it's David Scanlon. So stick around, we hope you enjoy. We're back, it's another year, another Oscars, another sham. You sound... <laughs> Buzzing, David. I'm, I can't wait. Come on, get I'm, excited. I'm uh, I'm cutting a few people down at the knees. Okay. And I'm I'm raising a few people up, a few movies up that deserve more recognition. Yeah. I was thinking satisfaction for some reason. <laughs> because well, I tell you what, the Oscars, they're good and bad. You mm. know, it doesn't mean whatever wins best picture, it's not the best picture. Yeah. It's all subjective. Yeah. So we're going to give our thoughts and say that their subjective opinions are wrong. Yeah. But the Oscars are great. In the sense of, there, it's a cool thing, I think, every year to have a, like, a, hey, let's recognise some movies that people didn't go see this year. <laughs> like Oppenheimer, no one saw that. You know what I mean? Little indie movie, like Barbie. You know what I mean? All these movies nobody saw. Yeah. So that's why I think it's cool. But there are times where sometimes they don't fully appreciate even some of the movies that are even more under the radar. This actually reminds me, I watched a video recently, about nine ten 10 minute video, about the whole, um, <clears throat> the idea of Oscar baiting. Mm-hmm. Do you know how it started? How it started. Or where it started. What I'm going to say Weinstein. Started. Well, that was a uh, yeah, serious part of the movement. Of it. But it was uh, The Deer Hunter. <gasps> they got terrible test screenings. Yeah. And uh, they decided the way they would market the movie is they would release it the last two weeks in like a few theaters, just enough to get into the Oscars and then just release it week by week in the lead up to the Oscars. Oh. It, it's an interesting, it's interesting video. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's... I feel like it's become such a big thing now of like Oscar Beatty movies. And we'll yeah. go through them. Oh, we'll go through them. All right. Yeah. yeah. Also, Deer Hunter. Balls. I haven't seen it. Happy it's, to say it's balls. Is it I'm over? Ha- I'm, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's wind back. Is that. it over? Or I'm under? not happy to say it's balls. I'm brave to say it's balls. <laughs> is it over or under three hours? It's three hours. Is it, so I could ask my three minutes, hours The first 40 minutes is just a wedding. Like The Godfather. No, not even that. It's just like people just dancing on tables and all chaos and stuff. Yeah. Now, that's probably an exaggeration. But you've never. I've. I. I don't like to exaggerate often. <laughs> I don't trust you, Gary. You don't even like movies. <laughs> I don't. Oh, I tell you, I've never watched the movie. Uh, but I tell you what, I have watched yeah. some of these movies. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I guess Oscars this year. General thoughts. I'm vaguely happy with them. Thought they captured a good amount of stuff this year. Obviously, some snubs. My biggest four, I think, of. Well, it's probably more three. I actually know it's just two. Two what? Now that I look at so, it. Sorry, two what? Two big snubs. In oh, my snubs. Okay, sorry, yeah. And I just mean generally, not for like any specific category, because obviously people have their thoughts around Greta Gerwig for Barbie and Margot Robbie for Barbie and stuff yeah. like that, but that was nominated a lot of other things. It also made $1. $1.4 billion. Yeah, I do I do think it's it. there becomes a stage where you, you feel less sorry for someone yeah. when they've, they're have they literally made a billion dollars. Yeah, and I think it was the writer of Juno, I forget her name, but she came out and she says, I wish my movie was a box office hit rather than winning an Oscar yeah. because I'm more likely to get work off a exactly. box office hit than winning an Oscar. Yeah. But the two big movies for me that I think I would have liked to see in any nominations for would be The Iron Claw and Saltburn. And yeah. that didn't get any love. And then also I have Colour Purple and Past Lives in here just because I feel like it, they didn't probably didn't enough. do as well as people uh, probably expected them to do. Yeah. Um, what about yourself? What are your thoughts on the Oscars this year? I've, I'm actually just going to go down through it section by section. If that's all right, because I've I've got I have, I have a couple of pages. Is that here. not the whole point of the podcast where we're going to go through? No, each I, category? sorry, I, I'm not going to say something off the top of my head because it'll sound stupid. Because okay. it'll probably be wrong. But um, there are a few. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Is yeah. one that comes comes to mind. Yeah, big time. Actually, you, you didn't say that. Sorry. No, I didn't um, say um, that. There's one. Yeah, all right. Okay, thanks. Um, that just comes straight to head. I'm like, that's something that I think deserved a bit more. But again. If people don't know to get nominated for the Oscars, you need like a serious um, push in terms of publicity, yeah. PR, stuff like that. It's it's a whole it's a whole another string to the um, budget of a movie. Yeah, uh, to get not only a movie nominated, but even like actors and people that are involved in the crew and stuff to get nominated for. Yeah, and so, generally uh, studios kind of have a policy of like they just make one big push, yeah. kind of thing like that. Yeah. So for something like. All of the strangers. That's one that also yeah, get nominated yeah. a lot. Um, that's Searchlight, which also is kind of focused a lot on poor things. Yeah, where it's probably its best chance. Um, which is why there was an interesting conundrum potentially going to happen this year in that Dune two and Barbie were both Warner Brothers movies, and to see which one they pushed oh, most. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but thankfully Dune's kind of has its own space now. That yeah. it's not caught up in the the pink of Barbie. That would have been another thing they could have done with the marketing. There is like Sandy Barbie House. 
like the, like, a, like you know like a, you know the way they had the sorry they had the uh, Barbie house and the Oppenheimer house yeah together. they could have had the Barbie house and then out the back is like a sand. big sandworm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's coming to you um anyway sorry I'm just rambling anyway I'm I'm excited to get into some of these yeah I just can't wait to cut some people down at the knee there we go <laughs> <laughs> this, I've got this, some, I've got I like, someone in, I like this David I've I'm, got someone in my sights like I'm, immediately okay, okay oh I think I know exactly who it is so how if people who don't know how we do this uh, last year I can't remember what we did but we had a, a rule we had like a we we pick who we think would win no so we pick who we wanted to win yeah or should win uh, yeah who should win we would predict no, no, who, would, who we think will win yeah, who so, we think should win and then swapping someone out. Yeah. But, so that was called Sub for Snub last year, but I've changed yeah. it now for a bit more coherency. If it isn't clear already <laughs> how coherent it is. So I'm calling it Pick, Predict, Evict. So Pick is the one who's, that's our pick to win. We want that person to win. We think that person should win. Predict is who we think the Oscars will give it to. So like, even though there might be ones where we're like, this person absolutely deserves to win, but the Oscars will probably give it to this other person. Mm. Um, and then we have Evict, where we're going to kick someone out and bring in someone we think deserves to be in that yeah. category. So, any questions, David? No, sounds good. Audience? Oh, actually, oh. sorry, I was going to say, what if we don't agree on the same person for pick or predict that's, or evict? That's that's fine. Like, it's not like a... Okay, it's not a competition. It's a conversation, David. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I know you're big into competition, but oh, like, oh, I'll fight you though. But how do I win? <laughs> how do you win? So I have brought the commentator from Gladiator. Yeah, yeah. No, Gladiators. Yeah, Gladiators to come in. Okay. And we have two big little uh, fucking those shtick things. Foam. With, yeah, foam yeah. things. Uh, and they're both for me and I'm going to beat the shit out of you until you agree with me. Does that sound good? Yeah, fair. Excellent. Right, so we're going to start with best actress, David. Okay. So we're going to go with... What order do you want to do this? Oh, well, let's just do a Vict because I know who you want to be in out of this. Well, category. no, sorry. Let's let's name the nominations. Oh, first. name the nominations, of course, David. Yeah, do you want? To, uh, I'll, I'll we'll do it. Alter. I didn't plan for this, but yeah. So the nominations for Best Actress are Annette Bening for Nyad, Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon, Sandra Huller for Anatomy of a Fall, Kerry Mulligan for Maestro, and Emma Stone for Poor Things. Yeah. What you picking, predicting, and evicting, David? Um, my so say pick is who we think is gonna win no now, pick who, I, who, <laughs> this makes so much sense when I wrote the notes up so pick is our pick is our pick okay personally I would go with Sandra Huller mm-hmm. that's my pick as well so okay. no fight so yet so no fight yeah. now what I would say is uh, I think Emma Stone was fantastic yep I think Carrie Mulligan was good but I don't think it was very much out of her wheelhouse like I've seen Emma her Stone. do no, sorry, Carrie Mulligan. Oh, uh, I've seen yeah, her. Yeah. yeah, like I've seen her doing. I've do seen better her. Stuff I've seen before. her be sad wife before. Yeah. As for the other two, what are they doing here? I understand the Lily. Gladstone like I understand attraction. Lily Glass not that. I like I also think it is vaguely monumental as well to have like the first Indigenous American actress to be nominated. That's cool. Like I mean, <laughs> I know it's cool. It's cool. And like, look, her performance is good for people who enjoy that movie. Yeah. Okay. I'll, and for- I, I, I'll, I'll concede that okay. but as of someone who doesn't like that movie doesn't like the character or any of the writing involved with her character yeah. it frustrates me to see her performance because I yeah. hate everything about it no and, and I'm it, not, no, no, I say everything about it. I hate what it's that's not what it stands for I just hate the message of her character yeah in a way so it frustrates me with so I'm too frustrated to enjoy her performance yeah so like the biggest problem with me is I didn't enjoy how that character was written yeah now what she was written like she does a good job job as but mm. She also took the jupe. <laughs> but I just think like there was, I was, well, number one, going into the movie, I was expecting a lot more. Like I was expecting kind of a bit of fight or aggression. Or fire. Her. Yeah. And didn't really get that. Yeah. Uh, as for Annette Benning, oof. So. Like, like Nyad is fine. It's totally fine. Yeah, yeah. It's a Netflix movie yeah. and it's totally fine. We'll get to, like, a Jodie Foster I thought was is, was probably better. Annette Benning was so infuriating. And maybe that's what the character is like, yeah. but I just could not get on board. See, you're too competitive. You you think you can beat her in a swim. That's why you don't like no, her. It's not even that. I know, it's just I like she one. she never took any, she just never took any responsibility in the movie. Well, I don't know. Now, to be fair, I, like, what is she? She's probably in her 70s now. Annette Benning, 60s. Is she? I don't know. But, um, like, she, fair play to her. You know, she puts in a lot of effort into the role and you can see, like, she, she does a lot of the swimming and the choreography and the stunts and stuff like that, but no way she be she should be anywhere near this. She's sixty five. She's sixty five. Okay, yeah. so we we round up here. Yeah, <laughs> like and the the obvious one that I would evict for yeah would be Margot Robbie. In saying that, I don't think no Margot Robbie is very good. Yeah, and she, that's that's my that's the same yeah. as well. I now, that's my evict. I evict Annette Benning and put in Margot Robbie. Yeah. 
like you you said it best that why he, she and Jodie Foster are here yeah. is because it's an old woman you know proving everyone that age is just a number and she can do what she wants yeah. and academy voters uh, are probably like fuck Margot Robbie this is me yeah. Um, not to sound weird but I just feel like that's yeah. kind of why and no, also and also Annette Benning and Jodie Foster have a lot of friends in the industry yeah. and they, they handed in a decent performance yeah, exactly. in a decent movie and they were probably like give it, give it some gold now it is it is hard to feel sorry for Margot Robbie considering that she made uh, 50 million dollars yeah. and she had been nominated before right? she, oh, she must have been nominated for I, Tanya. Yeah, must have been I assume so like and also, I, with, with, the big thing with snubs for me is like if the car if the sorry if the actor or the performer isn't going to win I feel less kind of sorry for them I disagree especially in sense, like, like especially Margot Robbie like two time Academy nom- nominee versus one time like it, it doesn't make a difference she's yeah, well, she's a producer she yeah, makes but, a lot of money yeah but I think yeah I said this is so this is my this yeah. is my point in that for some actors it's a big deal yeah but I think like for the likes of we'll get on to them late, late, we'll save it for later but just remember I was talking about this point yeah. but I honestly I was saying I said this to someone and I was like I believe our Margot Robbie similar to Brad Pitt will win an Oscar for producing before she wins an yeah. Oscar for acting and I don't think that's a bad career in any yeah. way shape or form yeah no I agree with that uh, awards wise she has been nominated for three Academy Awards so one for I, Tonya for Best Supporting Actress oh sorry for Best Actress for I, Tonya, Best Supporting Actress for Bombshell that's only yeah. two. I don't know where the third one is. Okay. Oh, no, she has one for Barbie, of course. She's a producer. Oh, producer, okay. So, yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, so who's your predict then? Who do you who do you reckon's going to win? Uh, Emma Stone. Yeah, I agree. See, yeah. look, we didn't need to this fight so at all. Yeah. Didn't fight at all. Um, also, there's time codes if you want to jump around. Yeah. I'd say that up top. So, that one, that one was very straightforward. Yeah. And also, people, YouTube, Spotify Q&A, and the email, readingintheprisegmail.com, let us know who you think is going to win. Yeah. That's important. Should have done this up top, but oh well. Ah, uh, don't worry. Yeah. Now let's get into let's Next get one. let's get some fifty cuffs going there. Let's I get into the meeting. I think it's gonna be fine. <laughs> uh the best original re- screenplay. Uh so the nominees are Anatomy of a Fall, Justine Trier, uh the holdovers David Hemmingson, uh Maestro Bradley Cooper, and Josh Josh Singer. May December, uh Sam Birch, story by Sam Birch and Sammy Birch. Oh, Sammy Birch. Just sorry. because I got given out to... Oh, did you? Okay. Well, someone on the other... Like, I called the director of... Um, what you call it? The Fifty Shades Darker, Sammy and someone. Oh, someone yeah, yeah. Not to give it out to me. They just collected um, me. Sorry, that story is by Sam- Sammy Birch and Alex Mechanic. And then Past Lives, Celine Song. So, <laughs> I don't know if you know that... Uh, that meme where it's like the three dragons and one of the dragons is dumb. Yeah. I feel like that's what's happening here because you have four... Well, sorry, I haven't seen May December, but I think you have three strong original screenplays, and then Maestro's in there, yeah. <laughs> which is it again. It's a Netflix movie, which is totally fine. Because <laughs> I don't think you had seen Maestro when we were talking about uh, when we were doing the Golden Gazies. Yeah, it's balls, isn't it? It's again, it's fine, and I think it's what I will say is there. There's some cool scenes at the start, and then they <laughs> drop that almost immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I think cinematography could be something that you you could nominate it for, and Personally, I do think the coops, the coops does a decent job. I think makeup as well, hair and makeup, the hair makeup is, is pretty, light, pretty good. Yeah. yeah, the thing, the biggest issue I had with that movie is the the whole conflict of the movie seems just kind of made up. Yeah, you never feel like it. Never, it's never obvious to you. So, so we blame that on the screenplay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which we- is which is why I'm kind of annoyed. It's here now. I would sorry yeah so that's sorry that would be my evict now similar yeah same with me okay so this is the problem here now I don't know what I would put in for I have one yeah Saltburn see my biggest issue with that is it's not original or it's not is it not no no sorry it is original yeah but it's just very similar to things I've seen before it's similar to things but it's an original screenplay it counts okay but I know but like I'm like I've seen things like that before Talon and Mr. Ripley and okay. stuff like that so different movies though no I understand that concept. there's been movies but like, before I suppose this is that I've never seen something like Anatomy of a Fall before okay. or I've never well sorry I have but like you yeah. know in that Let's oh, yeah. better take that out as well. And actually, yeah, the holdovers, I've seen snow, so that doesn't count. <laughs> and May, December, I've experienced all okay, 12 months so of the year. Here we go. You're saying Saltburn. I'm saying Saltburn. Okay. The the other options I had out there, Blackberry. You know, I, yeah, I was. I, Blackberry was close to a lot of my evicts of like putting them in. But now, again, I, don't, I think that's I, probably based on a book. It could be. Yeah. I don't know. Sorry, the other ones I had here, what did I say? Oh, no, Roy Lane. You know what? I, I think th- I'd still give it to Saltburn, but because um, I would, I would say Rye Lane is a better romantic comedy or r- romantic movie than Past Lives. 
Now, um, I know why people like Passa. Passa is fine. <laughs> thank you, David. It's good. Thank like you, it. David. I love when you agree with me on yeah. movies that everyone loves and I don't. Um, also, I think Past Lives is a cheating because she just wrote about her own life. <laughs> <laughs> That's not original. It's not original. Oh, sorry. That was the other issue I had with uh, Maestro being in there. How can it be an original screenplay if it's just about... So- ah, it's an original story, though. Nah, no. I, I, but also, like, Celine Song basically took her diary and put it on screen. Nonsense. Nonsense. No, sorry. This is uh, Maestro. Oh, I'm Maestro. Just, I'm complaining about Maestro. Yeah, oh, no, like, I know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But okay, I was just like, yeah, see, that's not based on like an autobiography or anything like that. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I. So, we're both evicting Maestro. Yeah. I'm putting in Salper and you're putting in Roy Lane. Maybe. What are you, what are you picking then? To win. Yeah. Well, no, picking is it. Oh, I need to think. No, no, that. no. Sorry. No, What's sorry. Your pick? I would, I think Anatomy of a Fall should win, but I think the holdovers will win. Okay. Yeah, I, I that's mine as well. Yeah, yeah. I think the whole whole they love Alexander Payne. Yeah, I love to give him an Oscar, but I. Don't but this think. says David Hemmingson. Oh, it yeah. is his script actually. Yeah, sorry, apologies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they love Alexander Payne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair. Uh, no, like yeah, I think. Look, I think if the holder is going to win for anything. Yeah. See, this the is the camera, other thing. It'll be. It'll win here. This was the other thing I was thinking of. Is I think, uh, in an overall sense, that Oppenheimer will either win. Sorry almost everything it's nominated for I think there's a few things in there it probably won't win but almost everything or I think it could get snubbed by like some of these things and I think something like a uh, holdover is like or a whole, poor things or poor things could yeah. like could do a job on it I don't know it, but again I don't know it's it, it, it'll be interesting to see because like they could go Oh, we'll give the best actress. We'll give that to an enemy of a fall, and then yeah. You know, but then so maybe they, they maybe that knocks on to Paul Giamatti. Yeah, so. get, get I don't know. It's, I think I think last year proved us wrong. Well, yeah. me wrong. Everyone, when I thought they'd spread out exactly, the Steven yeah. Spielberg, the um, everywhere ever all at once, and the other movie that was in contention that I can't remember was that the third. Oh, Banshees. Banshees. I yeah. thought like they'd spread those yeah. out, and they were like, nope. Yeah. So I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah. No, I, think, I, think, I just think there's a lot of buzz about the holdovers and that'll win it because it's a type of movie a lot of the Academy love. Well, sorry, the, love. the one I haven't seen is May, December. What's oh, that's a great, that's a cracking script. I know I know you haven't seen it, but like, it's definitely not for everyone. It's very camp. It's very odd. So I loved it. I could see a lot of people watching it and saying that is not for them. Okay, yeah, fair. No, that's all right. Um, yeah, so, okay, we got, to, that, that's yeah. two for two. Let's do two it. for two. Uh, oh, it's gonna, oh, well, we're gonna, well, no, actually, could be, so best supporting actor we've got Sterling K. Brown for American Fiction Robert De Niro for Killers of the Flower Moon Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer Ryan Gosling for Barbie and Mark Ruffalo for Poor Things so I'm gonna say my pick up top my pick Mark Ruffalo get him in there my biggest thing and I'm gonna contradict myself later on in the podcast so I'm aware is that uh, is that Robert De Niro is just Sorry, not Robert De Niro. Robert Downey Jr., who I predict will win, yeah. is just playing someone. He's just playing an, a historical character, yeah. and that's easy to do. And then also, he's kind of just being himself. Whereas Mark Ruffalo is doing something we've never seen him do before. And, like, Ryan Gosling is funny as Ken, but we've kind of seen shades of that before. Yeah. Robert De Niro is an old grumpy man who has sinister undertones. We've seen him do that before. Yeah. We've all seen Meet the Fockers. <laughs> and then Sterling K. Brown is excellent, but I don't think it's enough no. for, for an Oscar. I'm, I'm so happy for him to be nominated. Yeah. I just don't think he deserves to win. Yeah. And I'll just speak very quickly then about my predict then. Uh, my evict would be get De Niro out of there. Big time. Because he's just, what's number three for three? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, I nice. agree, yeah. Uh, and then my person I'm putting in is Charlie Melton from May, December. Hurts oh, me not to say uh, Glenn Harrison from Blackberry, yeah. but I think Charlie Melton is unbelievable in that movie and deserves the Oscar nomination. So, and this is, I just, quick point of, this is what I mean for like, he's not going to win, but this nomination means more to yeah. him than it does to Bob De Niro. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that's why it kind of matters because it puts him on, puts him on a platform that he can go on the red carpet, talk, talk to reporters get a bit of press and yeah. it's thought about more often so anyway sorry I could no I, I don't have a huge amount to say I agree with the first two uh, as I haven't seen Charles Melton in um, May December there's not a huge amount that comes to my mind I think you, you made a good point on Glenn Herriton but I just think that I think that movie that role it's probably just doesn't have the, um, the prestige or the mass appeal yeah. even like and there's no one really coming to mind maybe I'm trying to think here now I had like I also had in the mix the dad from Iron Claw, Holt something. Yeah, very He's good. Very, very good. Yeah. Or yeah, no, I, I would say yeah, maybe him. Yeah, okay, let's go with that. But um, I'm I'm sticking with Charlie Melton. Or yeah, 
No, yeah, that's the yeah, sure, that's fine. <laughs> no, no, sorry, no. Honestly, like if, if there was something that was coming to mind, and see, I've written it down. There's a also Paul of, Mescal as well. No, I don't think that was enough. Actually, no, no, that was enough. Sorry, we'll get back to that movie in a bit. But yeah. no, I, no, I think yeah, you're probably right. But um, yeah, I just think or De Niro is again in that in that category of actor with Annette Bening and Jodie Foster that like. They are. This could be their last Oscars. They're getting nominated. Actually, sorry, we're in the next in the next uh, category, we're going to talk about another one of these. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah performers. Yeah. And um, yeah, I feel like it's kind of a legacy nomination. Yeah. When was the last time De Niro got nominated? Probably in the nineties, was it? Um, no, I feel like he might have got nominated for like Joy. Oh wow. Do you right. know what I mean? Or Silver Line? He definitely got nominated for Silver Linings Playbook. Really? Yeah, Fuck he absolutely me. did. I'm so sure of that. That's can mad. I be wrong? He's no, that ma- right. that would make sense, I suppose. So everyone, just just for the record, David says I'm wrong. I do. David says I don't know. <laughs> I'm not shit saying about you're movies. wrong. David is a moron. Oh, actually, the kid out of the oh, holders. we're idiots. What? But then also about this. Uh, oh no, wait, no, we're not idiots. Sorry. So I I was right about Silver Lining Playbook, Playbook, but he also got a nomination in 2019 for The Irishman, but oh, not for acting for Best Picture. Best Picture. So that's what confused me. Yeah, um, on Cape Fear. Oh, he's great in Cape Fear. Sorry, the, other one, he's the other one I was going to say is Dominic Sessa from... Uh, oh Olives. yeah, a lot of people upset that Sorry, he didn't yeah. get the nomination. Yeah. No, he was good. Like, yeah. And again, the other thing is, I think that could have been, again, along those lines of it mean more to him than it would exactly. to De Niro. To, uh, De Niro so. uh, you've also got Jason Momoa for Fast X. Yeah, oh, incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, also, we haven't talked about it on the pod, but uh, how great is that line in the holdovers of Bud Light, the champagne of beers? <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite you love line. That. I love a running joke like I that. I love like, a good running gag. Yeah. And what about, I have a, jo- I have a thing with my mate Keith about uh, Budvar being the king of beers. <laughs> And if I have a champagne and beers, I was a big fan. Yeah. I got a good chuckle out of that. So I think that'll win best script. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll move on to the next one. Let's do it. So the next one, what are the categories there? What are the, uh, what are the So we got there? best original score. We got American Fiction, Laura Karpman. We got mm-hmm. Indiana Jones and The Dial of Destiny, John Williams. We've got Killers of the Flare Moon, Robbie Robertson, posthumous nomination. We've got uh, Oppenheimer, Ludwig Gorenson. And then we've got Poor Things, Yerskin Fendrix. Who has not done another movie before, yeah. as established on the <laughs> yeah, last podcast. Exactly. So, pick Ludwig. Mm-hmm. Predict Ludwig. Mm-hmm. Evict. I hate to say this, but John Williams. David, we're four for four. <laughs> yeah. uh, absolutely uh, agree. And, yeah. and this is, is going to be a rogue call by me, but I think Godzilla. Wow, one. that's good. Yeah, didn't even think of that. Is it, it, um, like, honestly, man, I listened to that score like on repeat it's yeah. so good I, I was wondering why you were stomping around the yeah, garden the other day so good um, uh, my evict was also yeah John Williams but I had the Spider-Verse lads in there okay no um, that's that's a, yeah. that's a good shout as well uh, um, and then I personally I, I wasn't a huge fan of the Killers I personally wasn't a fan of Killers of Flare I actually really liked that score. oh really okay. there was a great like um, heartbeat score throughout it and again it's not many notes but it was like a dun 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 oh, okay. what was it dun dun and I, there was just like a kind of like a strumming of a guitar thing yeah. that was very atmospheric and kept me going in times when like because the score kept me awake in the boring yeah. parts of that movie and I, I credit the score a lot with me sticking with that movie as much as I did Fair. before I went to the toilet <laughs> which I don't like doing during movies yeah. but this I was like I need a break exactly yeah. I also want to talk just about uh, Jerskin Fendrix yeah unbelievable score incredible this movie. very um, uh, um, unique and yeah yeah. Um, you've also got uh, Laura Car- Carpman for American Fiction. Yeah. Not many female composers get no, nominated, yeah. and uh, but yeah. you call it, except for your one who won for Joker. But yeah, I thought the American Fiction one, nice jazzy score. Yeah. Big fan of that. And the Indiana Jones one, look, it's really good. It's one of my favorite parts of the movie is that score. But again, it's kind of just like the original yeah. one. Yeah. But it does mean he's now earned his fifty fourth nomination at ninety one, extending uh, the record for most nominations for a living person and to be the oldest nominee. Man, put him to bed. Let him just go to bed, please. Just <laughs> let him rest. He's so old. Look, fair play to him. No, if he, look, if he enjoys doing it, absolutely. Enough, but so. I just would hate to think they manipulated yeah, him to do it. Yeah. Steven Spielberg is just it's knocking like, at his door. Come like, on, we're doing another indie. Get, we're getting the band back together. What? <laughs> what are they scoring? They're scoring indie. Yeah. I remember when they first invented <laughs> indie. Um, yeah, very boring. We actually have agreed there. Yeah, as well. I know. Cool. And I don't think we have anything else to say. No, that was easy. Move on to a best adapted screenplay. Oh, no, we're probably the same one here as well. 
So this one I kind of have. Yeah, oh, sorry, actually, this could be interesting. You, yeah. you... So the adapted screenplay, it's American fiction, Cord Jefferson, based on the novel Erasure by Percival Everett, Barbie by Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach, uh, based on characters created by Ruth Handler, Oppenheimer by Christopher Nolan, based on the biography American Prometheus, The Triumph and Tragedy of J. Robert Oppenheimer by Kai Bird and... I sound like a pronet to do this at the Oscars. So, and Martin J. Sherwin, Poor Things by Tony McNamara, based on the novel by Alistair Gray, and The Zone of Interest by Jonathan Glazer, based on the novel by Martin Amis. So, this could get interesting, but my pick to be boring again is Oppenheimer, because I still think the script is what keeps that person entertained from a very dialogue heavy movie for yeah. three hours yeah but then also and again i don't know anything about screenplays being good and um, so this is all subjective but i do think it was kind of cool it was written in the first person which most people have said that's yeah. not an industry standard so for it to be, to be done in a very unusual way but then also to be effective is impressive by good old chrissy nolan absolutely yeah um very strong um adapted screenplay category this year like, yeah but it, like, but a controversy barbie being in here as well yeah like <laughs> So, so the idea sorry are you saying that it should be an original or, yeah. yeah oh yeah uh, yeah that's probably something we probably should have mentioned earlier on this really, ah, we got but, uh, yeah because I think if, it, if honestly I feel like if it goes in original it wins original yeah probably but like I thought American Fiction the screenplay and that is quite good now we we had some differing opinions about the whole kind of family drama but we I think that's have, oh, we have yeah good man but uh, that, that the February podcast came out before this, okay. so we discussed that then, <laughs> yeah. didn't we, Davis? Yeah. But uh, we're banking a couple. <laughs> we're banking a couple of episodes. But I think the idea of the family drama is is necessarily over ambitious. Yeah, I remember over, you saying that. Over. I remember you saying that last <laughs> week on last week's episode. But uh, just to kind of prove that point that, yeah. like, you know, the, anyway, why he's, why he's keeping the yeah. rules up, kind of thing. Um, poor things, great screenplay great concept uh oppenheimer fantastic zone of interest i think that, that might be the issue that's with the my movie evic- that's my evict yeah is the script yeah i think there's not like it's the visuals and the sound and yeah. the performances not necessarily with dialogue that kind of make that the haunting movie it is and i think the story and the dialogue yeah. are weak yeah er than these other movies but the the issue there for me would be that like that is a type of movie that deserves the recognition for its uniqueness and its idea its concept but i don't think it would get that if it was just to be nominated for sound or even visual effects or anything i like agree that. yeah so i think, I yeah, think yeah, yeah. now it is nominated for best picture yeah so i think it, yeah maybe no, maybe point. my point is kind of null and void but sorry do you did you say who you wanted to put in instead Oh, no, but I can tell you your name. Because uh, well, I was going to say, are you there, God? And that's the same as mine. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Because e- everyone I've talked to who has read the book has said it was a great adaptation. Yeah, and I think that's such a hard sense. thing to do, and yeah. especially for something that ha- has been read for de- decades. Yeah. And then yeah. for them to make a faithful adaptation that also enhances it or makes it more accessible for audience, uh, yeah. movie-going audiences. Yeah. Sorry, the, the other thing was, when I, before I even looked at the nominations there, I thought Killers of Flower Moon was nominated. Because, again, for people that have read the book they've told me it's nothing like yeah. it or it's a weirder version of it but yeah, yeah. I guess it's not there so it's just throwing more shade on, on <laughs> Scorsese <Yeah. laughs> poor little man can't take it yeah. but you haven't given me your predict though who do you think's going to win oh sorry Oppenheimer and Oppenheimer so I disagree well I don't dis- well, I, yeah, I don't yeah I yeah I don't have to say it, put it that way so this is where our streak ends unfortunately so sorry you think I you think want Oppenheimer I want I, my, Oppenheimer is my pick but my predict is Greta Gerwig for Barbie because I think it's going to be very but Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach. Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> like I, I don't think he's a good writer at all. I think she just keeps him around, <laughs> so <laughs> so he keeps busy, so he's not annoying her. But my prediction here is that similar to Ben Affleck not getting nominated for best director, yeah. ev- there's a big uproar. Excuse me, there's a big uproar about it, and then everyone goes and votes for what they think will win. I don't think Barbie will win best picture, but I think if people know there's a way to celebrate. Greta Gerwig's work it's in this category for this award and I think they know as well mm. we can get on to it later that I believe that people will think will probably vote for Chris Nolan for director, director so yeah. that's his Oscar there okay, he yeah. absolutely deserves an, uh, sorry, an Oscar for Oppenheimer I believe so yeah. but I feel like Greta Gerwig will take it here with Noel Baumbach just sitting there being like I did some other words fuck off <laughs> he did every second word yeah no he didn't he did, <laughs> anyway um, whatever no, he wrote uh, Ken. 
Did he? No, wait, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. No, that's a good, it's a good uh, concept. Yeah, like uh, Christopher Nolan is now nominated on, I presume he gets a best picture. If, yeah, if he's a producer, it. I'm pretty sure. So, Him and his yeah, movie. it's unlikely he'll get all three. So if he was going to lose one, it would probably be this yeah, one. that's what I think so. But we'll see. We we'll get that's my, predict- my prediction. Yeah. Right, David, what's next? Oh, that's five. Wow. We yeah. are we are getting through these quick. It's been half an hour. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next category is Best Supporting Actress. So we have Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer. We've got Daniel Brooks for The Colour of Purple. Uh, America Ferreira for Barbie. Jodie Foster for Nyad. Divine Julie Randolph for The Holdovers. Okay, this is a tough category. In that it's all shit. It's well, weak. no, it's, like, no, it's, a, it weak. Is, it's, it's a weak. It's weak. And you know what's unfortunate? Remember last year it was so strong last year because yeah. you had the Banshee of Inisherin, you had uh, Everything Girl Ever All at Once, somebody else, a fourth person perhaps, <laughs> and then that fifth person brought it all together. Uh, I just remember last year that 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 category was so strong. Yeah. Um, this year, my God, it is that's a weak sauce. Michelle Williams was nominated for the Fablemans last she? year. I think so. Uh, I think that might have been the one I didn't like. She would have been. She, she she would have, while you talk, I'm going to look at yeah. my sub for okay. stuff last year. So I think we have two standouts. We have Daniel Brooks and Divine Joy Randolph. Sorry, this is sorry. These are my personal yeah. uh, thoughts. I think they're the two standouts. Now you have uh, America Ferrera and Emily Blunt, who had who both had very good monologues. Yeah, and there's no denying that they were good monologues. But for the rest of the movies, they're in for the runtime. They're not. They're fine. They're good. <laughs> they're, yeah, well, they're no, good. America Fair is better. Yeah. Well. She's more to do. Yeah, but I do believe Emily Blunt's monologue is better. Oh, yeah. In, in performance, not in script. Yeah. Uh, also, just to go back to it very quickly, uh, last year, Michelle Williams wasn't nominated oh, for okay. um, it. It was actually a great category. It was Angela Bassett for Black Panther. Yeah. It was Hong Shao for The Whale. Kerry Condon for Banshees. Jamie Lee Curtis and Stephanie Hsu for Everything Ever All at Once. And then my soul for Snoop was k- taking Stephanie Hsu out there and putting in LaShawn Lynch for The Woman King because I love LaShawn Lynch. Yeah, how did your one not win for The Whale? She was incredible in that movie. Yeah. Sorry, then but an- an- <laughs> Angela Bassett gave a big monologue last year. Yeah, I know. And then she didn't win. And then everyone got angry at Jamie Lee Curtis. But back to this year, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, um, so my pick... Fuck, my pick to win. Jesus Christ. Um, Who are you backing? I would pick Divine Joy Randolph. Mm-hmm. I think her, her role... That was... It was the... And again, a bit like uh, you said with Mark Ruffalo... It's from from what I've seen her in, which is pretty much just the uh, Only Murders, Only Murders <laughs> yeah. film, where she plays a tough cop. And uh, Lost City. No, not Lost City. Oh, she is Sorry, in Lost City. No, 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 she is in Lost City. Is she yeah. in Lost City, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, just seeing her range in this, I think, was incredible. Now, I don't think she'll win. But I, I think I, she I, will. Really? I, she's my prediction. I predict she'll win. I don't know. I just think the... There's Emily Blunt. There's America no Fox. way in hell Emily Blunt. Like if oh, she, okay, she might, but I think that is appalling. <laughs> I love Emily Blunt. She's great in a lot of things, bad in some others. But um, I think that movie, she is like, and again, it's nothing to do with her. It's just how Chris Nolan writes women characters. Yeah. That she's just sad, drunk wife for a lot of that movie, and then comes in in that scene and fucking kicks ass, and it's mm. great. But she does. You know, drunk wife well. The other like... annoying point about this category is I have not only one, but two people I would put in. <laughs> you, you I've loaded of, I've loaded people I'd put in. Okay, because first one that comes to mind is Claire Foy for All, all the yep. Strangers. Second one is uh, Rachel McAdams for yep. Are You There, God? Is Me, Margaret? I don't know. Is My third is uh, Rosamund Pike, which Rosamund is very, Pike. which is very much on me, but I think she's Excellent that movie. The, uh, the, in my, a weaker year, I think she'd absolutely get it. My issue there is I've seen her do roles like that. Like what? Johnny English. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Posh British woman. She doesn't do this before. James Bond. She does, that's a different character. That's Miranda Frost, David. That's different. Um, Ridiculous work you with Gustav that, Grace. You just love that movie. I do, but I think she's excellent in that. I think I think she plays that role so well. So would you take the three girls out of this... I would say, so I, being all, three. all of my women I've picked I would take out Emily Blunt America Freire and Jodie Foster bin them and stick my ones in yeah absolutely wait yeah. Yeah, I, absolutely I, I probably couldn't agree disagree with you there yeah. Yeah, yeah so my pick and predict is the Divine Joy Rand- Randolph and my evict is America Freire over Jodie Foster and okay. over Emily Blunt just because I think I think she's great she's in a lot of good stuff Ugly Betty unbelievable 
which is also another good stuff but I love her in Ugly Betty but I just think like what an yeah, Oscar nomination for that like for that performance yeah. it's fine yeah fair she does um, speech well but I think that's the writing oh, I don't know she does perform well I don't know no I don't know that's just the one I'm like that's the sore of thumb the biggest sore of thumb in my opinion yeah. I honestly can't I don't know where they're going with this like I'd love to think that Divine Joy Randolph will win like I pre- she definitely won the Golden Globe but again that's split between comedy and drama no uh, no it's not not for supporting oh not for supporting okay so that, it depends okay, on SAG if SAG has happened yet but we've recorded this ages ago so it might have yeah. happened yeah, fuck it, I'll agree with you then. Okay. Yay, if, we're back if, on we're back on. Yeah, uh, no, if Gary if Gary thinks she's gonna win, then she probably will. Yeah. Um right, we're moving on very quickly onto best animated feature, which has got the boy and the heron, Elemental, the Mona, Robot Dreams, and Spider Man Across Spider Verse. The reason I put this in here is Spider Man Across Spider Verse is more than likely going yeah. to win. That is my prediction. Yeah. But and we gave it animated movie of the year, David. So you'd think it'd be my pick. Uh uh-uh. uh. I actually want Nimona to win because yeah. it goes back to yeah. I think that movie deserves that credit more whereas in the sense of I don't really like Cross Spider-Verse is so good because it builds upon a lot of the good stuff that was set up in Into the Spider-Verse yeah. and it's a better movie than Nimona but I think from an artistic and creative perspective Nimona deserves the award uh, fair um, the sorry yeah okay I I know I, I, I don't I don't stand over that with much confidence i just i just feel like on on the day yeah. when i hear the names called out i cheer for nimona more than i would as cross spider verse yeah that's fair um as as you say like uh did into the spider verse get nominated it won oh did, sorry no sorry what was i saying is did into the spider verse get nominated for best picture no and across the spider verse didn't as well okay yeah no i can't disagree with you i still think yeah. spider-man will win I think it probably should win. Yeah. I'd probably pick it as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then Evict, I just would take Elemental out of there because I don't think it's a very yeah. good movie. And the only other animated movie I've seen is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, like it's, I wouldn't say Again, it's the, the biggest thing with this is, I it's, it's uh, I think the, sorry, the um, with an animated feature film category, the animation should be the thing. So I agree. Yes, yes, yes. I like the like when you're looking at uh, who you're going to nominate and who who you think is going to win, I think first of all, did the animation capture your you know imagination? Did it entice you in? And then secondly, was it a good story? Was yeah. it a good everything? And I think the elemental animation was not not that it was poor. It was just it's a little bit bland. Yeah, it was just a little bit bland. I think. Whereas I think the um, animation on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was just something kind of different and a little bit kind of out there. Yeah, it's very, very like it's cross Spider-Verse stuff. Yeah, so gross. <laughs> very gross. And then also, I guess just one movie that I was, I didn't particularly want to get nominated, but I thought it might have, would have been Chicken Run, just because I know they like kind of giving yeah. nominations to the stop motion, stop motion thing, keep yeah. that company alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so again, yeah, not too, I don't, not too many thoughts on this. But, uh, yeah, fair. Yeah. No, that's, that's a quick and easy one. Shall we move on to the next one, David? I don't think we'll agree here, will we? Probably not. We might, I don't know. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's it's do it. <laughs> your turn. Oh, sorry. Next category is Best Actor. Bradley Cooper for Maestro, Coleman Domingo for Rustin, Paul G. Matty for The Holdovers, Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer, and Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. A lot of single-named movies titles. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's just something that I was wrong. Really I never realised now why we're not going to agree. I've just realised that now, sorry. Okay. Killian should win. Yeah. Killian will win. Oh! Bin Bradley Cooper. I think oh, Brad- we do agree! Yeah, no. <laughs> my, my pick and predict is Killian Murphy, my evict is Bradley Cooper. No, because I would, with Bradley Cooper, I think he's 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 grand in it. I think the makeup does a lot of work for him and it's not hugely outside his wheelhouse what I've seen before. Whereas, for example, Coleman Domingo, who, funnily, is in like all these movies that I've seen before, but I've never seen him. Yeah. He's like always been a side character and a little bit like Jeffrey Wright, this is the first time he's gotten the, the lead role in the movie. So I know Rustin was kind of a little bit kind of bland and boring, but I thought he was very charismatic oh, in his role. Oh, yeah. When you could, like that movie doesn't work yeah. without him. So. Yeah, yeah. And then Jeffrey Wright was, I think, was brilliant. But again, it's it's he's has such a uh, catalog of um, roles in the past, and you've seen him in everything, like whether it's Westworld, James Bond, whether it's in like even like other previous. What um, if? Yeah, no, even like I'm yeah. talking, I'm talking, thinking like other Oscar Beatty movies. Like he was in Ali. Oh, fuck he was yeah, in, he was in Ali. He was probably in also a load in of. Rustin. He was in a load of. Um, 
Wes Anderson movies and stuff like that. But it, it's great to see him get a, a chance at like in the spotlight. Yeah. And, and also, just like in regards to, yeah, absolutely. And I think he just, this is what I mean. Like he won't win, but it's so yeah, it, great for, for like, him to yeah, have that nom- yeah. like Oscar nominated actor, Jeffrey Wright. Yeah. Like that's fantastic. And the one thing I would say is like, I think Paul Giamatti is great, but what's his name? Sorry again. Alexander Payne. Alexander Payne came out and he said he wrote that role for Paul Giamatti. Whereas you have, for example, Coleman Domingo and Jeffrey Wright. Coleman Domingo is playing a real life character, but I think he's putting his own spin on it. And Jeffrey Wright is playing a whole new character. But it again, it's kind of outside his wheelhouse. He has to add a little bit of um, comed- just, comedy to his role. Yeah. He has to add, you know, he has to be, there was, I think it was just, a, he was felt, felt like he was a little bit more stretched. Whereas I think Paul Giamatti is great in his role, but having a character written for you seems a little bit of a cheat. Yeah. I'm not saying that, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, I do think, th- so this is why I just fear for Killian here because I know a lot of people love Paul Giamatti yeah. and this is the first good dramatic role he's had. Well, comedic dramatic role he's had in a long, long time yeah. and they're like, fuck it, we should give him the Oscar now because he's done so much great work beforehand and Killian Murphy, this is his first time out so yeah. he might be back here again kind of thing. Yeah. But I absolutely agree. I think Killian Murphy should win, will win and it's not no less deserved yeah. uh, other than I just gave out earlier about people uh, playing real life characters but this time <laughs> yeah. it's different because he's good and Irish and those big baby blues lure me in <laughs> <laughs> also he does he does so much heavy considering he's either in or practically in every, every scene, scene yeah. in that three hour movie yeah. um, am I evict like I said is Bradley Cooper who am I sticking in Zac Efron for Iron Claw. Oh, okay. Because I thought you were going to go with Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> no, do you know what, David? I was thinking it, but absolutely not. I think Zac Efron and the Iron Claw, we talked about it last week or whenever the other one came out before this. I hope yeah. we did anyway. I think the physicality and yeah. the emotion that he brings to that movie is unlike anything I've seen him do and many other actors do. It reminds me of Mickey Rourke in The Wrestler, who's yeah. also incredible and also snubbed of an Oscar, but not an Oscar nomination, but an Oscar yeah. uh, a win. win. And um, I think this this should have been the movie that put Zac Efron on the yeah. map of like, he's a serious actor. And now he's in a stupid movie, like we talked about last episode, <laughs> called Ricky Stan Nicky, uh, which I think I told I think if I recall, David, I told you how I actually can't fucking wait for that movie and I'm really excited. Not a joke. I did say that last week. I will say that next week. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I, so I just see him in those type of comedies. It's a bit frustrating because I knew, I felt like this could have been the launching point. Yeah, even like the if anyone has seen uh, The Iron Cloud, the first scene he's in and he's... His back, David. Yeah. Remember we just, talked about that last week? I'm going to stop with that joke. No, but like, it's it's like seeing... Uh, I know this is going to sound weird, but it's like seeing a T-Rex in, in Jurassic Park for the first time. Like, it's just like, where does he end? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, so I, I, I can't disagree with you there. My, my um, switch out would have been Andrew Scott. And it's yeah. it's kind of more, I'm probably being a little bit biased, yeah. being another South Dublin boy. But um, no, I thought he was very good. Yeah. And again, he, he's, he typically plays a more kind of menacing character. So yeah. it's nice to be a little, bit, a little bit of a sweetheart. That's very true, yeah. Uh, ready to move on? Yeah. <laughs> my favourite category. Is, this, I, I don't know any of these. <laughs> David, this is my favourite category of the year because yeah. I get to rant, David. So, the nominees for Best Original Song is The Fire Inside from Flame and Hot, music and lyrics by Diane Warren. I'm Just Ken from Barbie, music and lyrics by Mark Ronson and Andrew Wyatt. It Never Went Away from American Symph- Symphony, music and lyrics by John Baptiste and Dan Wilson. Oh, was that... Wazahiza, a song for my people from Killers of the Flower Moon, music and lyrics by Scott George, not the person I, not the name I would have associated with someone who wrote that. And um, What Was I Made For from Barbie, music and lyrics by Billie Eilish and Phineas O'Connell. So if people have listened to this podcast, podcast before, hello again. If you haven't, hello for the first time. Um, I have a big issue with this category because I went back and looked at the winners again. It upset me because I despise when they give it to songs that are played over the credits. It shouldn't count. It should have to be a, mo- a song that is instrumental. Not an instrumental in the sense there's no the lyrics there. Yeah, well, yeah. Let's not be ridiculous here. <laughs> uh, but instrumental in the in the story It's the movie is trying to tell. So like last year, Natu Natu, unbelievably a core part of the movie and th- those type of songs where it's just like it's 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 ingrained in it yeah. and I think this year did quite well bar one well actually no bar two uh, but one's an absolute banger so it's forgiven actually and I don't know when uh, it never went away fits in so really only two uh, songs are in the movie which is I'm Just Ken and What Was I Made For yeah. I'm Just Ken I don't I, I'm over it I was never on board with it I didn't <laughs> like the song 
It's nominated. I just want to see Ryan Gosling perform it. Yeah. That's all I'm there for. My pick and predict is What Was I Made For from Barbie. I have listened to all five songs. This is excellent. And it's in a great part of the movie. And it really helps you feel that emotional yeah. part of the movie. And I just think that's what these that's what this, this category should be for. The Fire Inside fucking banger go listen to it it's a great tune Flaming Hot is a movie that's meant to be fine but this this song's great yeah. it's played over the credits but it's a great song <laughs> anyway moving swiftly on I never went away fine it's all sad or whatever like that is that in the, that's in the movie I have no it? idea oh, okay. uh, and then there's Wazahi was that one a song for my people it's played over the credits it's the last song in the movie you know where the camera floats up fucking it's a cool song get it out of there evict it I, if I if I see that if, if I saw that living in a two bed flat in Dublin city centre and I'm a landlord I'm gonna evict it because it's no good and it's late paying its rent it's out of there David what's going in David I don't even have just one I have fucking three songs to go in there and I'd also take I'm just Ken out but it, like again I only want it in there because I want to yeah. see um, uh, what you call it Ryan, uh, Ryan Gosling. Gosling have to perform at the Oscars and I would leave the fire inside because that's a banger and then the John Baptiste one's probably a good song but I was just like <laughs> you know what I was just listening to banger before this so I'm not gonna tune in uh, what should have been nominated I my real answer yeah is gonna be my third option but I'm gonna give you two silly ones first okay. Peaches Peaches yeah <laughs> I think that could have been a funny one I don't think it deserves to be nominated in any way shape or form yeah, but it okay. would have been funny the second one David is one of my favourite songs of the year and I'm not joking it's called Dear Alien Who Aren't in Heaven I'm not a fan of Wes Anderson David <laughs> I don't enjoy many of his weird quirky movies but when that little boy started yodeling <laughs> about the alien yeah. best part of the movie yeah that's fair I could agree and David uh, from Gary from the Future if you could just play a little clip of that yeah. that'd be really appreciated and hope we don't get taken down what a song. Yeah. My real answer, and I actually do think it deserves to be in here, is Meet in the Middle from Flora and Son. The song with uh, Eve Houston. No, what's her name? Eve Houston. Eve Houston and uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. That was a rant. I do apologize. Sorry. So, any thoughts? Yeah, I, just, I don't really remember the um, most of these songs. Uh, or never, I didn't. Sorry, I haven't listened to them. Why am I talking? About? I don't really remember the uh, Killers of Flower Moon song. What I was made for should win. I think it will win, unless there's something seriously wrong with the Oscars. Again, I don't really have too much of an opinion. I was looking through to see if there was any musicals we've seen. <laughs> uh, there is. I, I know it's not an original song, but um, Cut it ha- Hall and Oates. <laughs> Man, Man either. either that should be a category best performed song. <laughs> best performed now, David, song. I've just realised that I've actually had a fourth option. Oh my god! <laughs> I've a, I d- actually, I've just realised it's not an original song, so it doesn't count. But I would have put it in here. There is that Aquafina song from The Little Mermaid. <laughs> The scuttlebutt. <laughs> yeah. David, this is what I get. I get heated in this yeah. category. Yeah. Um, my other song, let me just find the exact name for it here. Do you, sorry, the other one I was thinking there is Spider Man. What, what about Spider Man? The, the other one's in Spider Man. The other one, the Sunflower. Dominic Fike one. Oh, yeah. Nah. Yeah. Hmm. Or even the one over the credits is nice, but I know it's not a serious part. Um, but it is. It's a good song. I have another one that Sorry, I would one. like to see in there. Yeah? Gay Old Life from Dick's the Dick's Musical. The musical. <laughs> I haven't talked about Dick's the Musical on the podcast because it's it's not out in Ireland, but I flew over to America to go see it, and it's fucking incredible. You were invited to the premiere, weren't you? I was invited to the premiere. I got to meet the Sewer Boys, David. <laughs> it's Sewer such movie. a good movie. Anyway, this is probably the longest category we've talked yeah, about. I, I do apologize. Sorry, I'm just trying to see if there's anything that... There was nothing in Bottoms, was there? No. Dream Scenario? No. No, no like, I said. When I look at the 2023 movies, the only three musical, quote unquote, musical ones are The Color Purple, The Color Purple, Flora and Sun, and for some reason, Maestro was included here. Um, yeah, like there was nothing personally hugely memorable from The Color Purple, but I'm sure there is a good song. In there there's the one about uh, your one Sophia telling him to fuck off. Like yeah. Damn right or something. I can't remember what it is. Yeah. We move on. Sorry. Yeah, um, we're nearly there. Right, okay, I'll fly through this. Sorry, so best uh, director. Uh, my see, category. It is, and I was trying to be nice because I was going to give you best picture. Nah, I don't want it. Okay, fine, <laughs> go ahead. Best director, Justine Trier, Anatomy of a Fall, Martin Scorsese, Killers of the Flower Moon, Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer, Yorgos Lanthimos, Poor Things, Jonathan Glazer, The Zone of Interest. Now, David, please tell me we're not going to commit another act of elderly abuse here, are we? <laughs> Well, sorry, I was just going to say the point I was making on original screenplay for Zone of Interest, I think, mean is kind of added on here because I think the direction of the movie is very good. 
So maybe that's mm. what it should be nominated for rather than screenplay. Yeah, yeah that's So, right. yeah, that's... No, yeah, we absolutely are. We're kicking that yeah. old man out. Absolutely, <laughs> we are. He's been here before. He's yeah. won it before. He, he won it for his Boston movie, guys. So at 81, he is the... And he earned his 10th nomination for, what you call it, Best Director with more... Uh, yeah, so more, so he has more Oscar nominations for Best Director than anyone else, and he's the oldest Best Director nominee, eclipsing John Houston, who was 79. For some reason, I thought Bradley Cooper was nominated as well. Nah, I'm very happy about it. That he yeah, wasn't. which is, fu- yeah, would have been a bit, a bit of a travesty. So, um, so what's your pick and or predict? See, you've got my head now about Christopher Nolan. So they they could split the votes and go say Oppenheimer for best picture they could give say Jorgos this yeah because Jorgos didn't write poor things did he no it was someone else yeah. I'll double check now so. so like they might want to just give everyone an Oscar everyone Tony gets an McMahon. Oscar Tony McMurray there you go personally I would like Christopher Nolan to win it I just think that movie is so well directed like I mean maybe it's the editing can I, I say know. can I say my wanky phrase which I love saying prestige yeah. filmmaking prestige Davis. filmmaking <laughs> But I could see them nah. going elsewhere, no? It, you can't, like, the man's been chasing on Oscar for years with his Dunkirks and his Inceptions mm. and his not so much Tenant. But the man wants an Oscar. I think yeah. this is where they'll give, like, I could, uh, Oppenheimer, yeah, we'll get it, we'll talk about it in the next category. But I think this is it. This is where Chris Nolan stands up on the stage and says, I did it! Fuck you, Hollywood. Yeah. Um, ah, fair, okay. Uh, so he's my pick and predict here. Yeah. But I do agree if there is to be an upset. Oh, we should add an upset one for last year and we make it even more confusing with the words. Uh, Yorgos would be my upset. Yeah, here. I would go Yorgos as well. But tell me, David, if we're evicting the old elderly 81 year old Martin Scorsese, who are we putting in? Well, the obvious the obvious thing we're missing is a female. <laughs> no, we're not. The, oh, sorry, you just seen Drew. Just seen um, apologies. Um, but. <laughs> See, Greta Gerwig, is that well-directed? It is well-directed, yeah. yeah. I, I think I, that's the best part of it. It is, and I honestly just believe it's just such a unique vision that's never been brought to screen before. She yeah. was instrumental in creating that wor- that Barbie world. Oh, I get the song now. I'm a Barbie girl in the Barbie world. <laughs> um, but she's instrumental in that, so I strongly feel like she deserves a director nomination. I'm not... I don't feel bad for her. Yeah. Again, she has millions and millions from this and gets to direct a really exciting franchise called Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> that thing everyone's been dying to see. Um, but I, like, look, I, I just think, um, yeah, the direction that movie is, I don't think she should win, but I do think it needs to be. Nominated. Yeah. See, again, the my issue here is I don't think there's anyone that's not nominated who would win or it even be in contention to win. Personally, I know this is, this is a bit of a left wing uh, choice, but um Davies, Gareth Davies, Gar- Gareth Edwards, Gareth Edwards, For the creator. The I think the direction is incredible. And like now, maybe it's maybe it's more visual effects, but it was just the thing that kind of popped into my head. Okay. Like because what sometimes happens is you get those more kind of science fiction style directors or something a little bit outside of the typical kind of drama, and it's it's just not really in here. Now maybe zone of interest. That was a bit funky, wasn't it? Well, I was about to say I. Speaking of funky, just sorry, not to cut you off, but um, even though I did, so I apologize. <laughs> anyway, um, would be I'd actually, if you want funky in there, I'd give it to Emerald Fennel, Fennel for Saltburn. Salt okay, yeah, because I was looking at that now. Like, are you there, guys? Me, where it's, the direction isn't really the yeah, thing there. It's, yeah, well, it is, but like, I wouldn't say it's odd, like. I, like, be like, I think the screenplay is more important yeah. than the direction. Yeah, maybe Saltburn because that's well, like a, a, the direction in that is probably a big part of how, why that movie works yeah and if you actually watch her break down any of the scenes as well it's so interesting like yeah. it's re- like you hear Martin Scorsese talk about the, how he does the directing and you're just like cool and then but Emma Fennell she's so passionate and she's like you, all the little details yeah. and how she I was just really impressed with her as a um, yeah. again and she like she impressed me you know <laughs> she has my approval now so that means a lot <laughs> whatever no but I was just really like Jesus <laughs> so cool she's really made it she's now. really made it well done she gets a seal of approval from me Gary O'Brien yeah. podcast air um, <laughs> another person I was going to throw in would be Todd Haynes for May December I don't think it's an Oscar worthy direction but yeah. I think it's out there and, and definitely funky yeah fair yeah. no I agree with you probably sorry what, did you agree on Emerald I, Fennell I, I went with or? I'm going with Greta Gerwig over Emerald okay. Fennell but I agree with Ed, Greta Gerwig I probably but again I think that movie's made so much money it doesn't it no it does, absolutely but I just think it's really impressive as and, in like, and she's been nominated before for Little, Little Women, Women. She, oh that's a great question I think um, so Greta Gerwig the Irishman <laughs> <laughs> wait or did she get I think she got nominated for writing 
Sorry, would have been adapted screenplay. She got nominated for best director for Lady Bird, oh. uh, original screenplay. Lady Bird, yeah, best uh, original what? screenplay for Lady Bird, and then best adapted screenplay for Little Women and Barbie. So yeah, she's never been. She hasn't been nominated for a director since Lady Bird. Lady Bird, okay. Who'd she lose to? Fun game. Let's go back in time and get angry at old directing. Oh, 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 I love getting angry at the past, David. Yeah. Um. So she lost to Guillermo del Toro for The Shape of Water. Oof. And but it's also important that you know he beat out uh, Jordan Peele for Get Out. <laughs> well, see, this is the thing, and this comes back to my point about the Oscars: is that you have movies, for example, Get Out probably didn't. It did, oh no, probably won screenplay. screenplay. But like, it's not. It's th- never going to win Best Picture. That movie will hang around for years, and you'll be telling people to watch it. You know. In years to come yeah Whereas, shooting kids yeah well you know what I mean <laughs> yeah but like Shape of Water Shape of so Water. forgettable it's, yeah are we on to our final we're on to our final category the best picture so the nominees for that were American Fiction and Anatomy of a Fall Barbie The Holdovers Killer of the Flower Moon Maestro Oppenheimer Past Lives Poor Things and The Zone of Interest I was just realised we didn't talk much about Greta Lee and um, the woman who directed it much because people thought they were snub but I don't agree. In my yeah. we'll move swiftly on. So no, I, I, I so, think that movie's well directed, but I, I, I don't yeah. think it's so ju- yeah. any in there. Like. I agree. Um, so this is actually really hard because this is there's a lot of movies in here. So th- what I was going to suggest is if we're going to do it like a normal category and narrow it down to five, what would you pick? Oh, great question, David. This is why I, 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 I'm just why I get I just, you on this so many times. <laughs> yeah, narrow it down to five is Anatomy of a Fall. Yeah, Oppenheimer. Yeah, Poor Things. Yeah. So I would have gone holdovers. See, I'm looking at holdovers, and then I don't know what's the last one. <laughs> I think Barbie. Yeah. Okay. But I, 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 I do. I want American fiction over holdovers. No, holdovers are American fiction. Yeah, yeah. And so I would been uh, past lives, zone of interest, American fiction, and Maestro. Did I say? I think I might have repeated myself there. Did so I? sorry, you're going Anatomy of Fall. You're saying the holdovers. Yeah. Barbie. Yeah. Oppenheimer. Poor things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I don't know if I would go Barbie. Again, like, and I, see, this is the thing. I, I, I know we're being cynical about it made a lot of money, but, like, at the end of the day, it is a very impressive piece of art in taking what is a, <laughs> effectively, a children's doll and using it <laughs> to lure people into a conversation about gender equality and yeah. the place of women in society. Yeah. And I think that's really impressive. Sorry, I'm just looking here. If I was to pick... Zone of interest, which I would, it would just match what was down for, for director. the director. So yeah. I think I will go Barbie. There you go. <laughs> so we were evicting five Although, minutes. American fiction. American fiction. See, again, if, if American fiction leaned into the satire a bit yeah. more, I think it would have. If it was more big short. Yeah. No, nah, Barbie. Let's go Barbie. Yeah. Barbie was as satirical as yeah, American fiction. If, just me- for a different way minority. Better. Yeah. <laughs> minority. You know what I mean, sorry. <laughs> just, uh, sorry, the dish, the other gender. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, there's a load of genders now, isn't there? <laughs> and cut. Um, so this is actually a really hard one for the evict, I find. Yeah. Well, the evict is easy. It's Killers of the Flame Moon, Binnet. Yeah. Uh, I know we're being very uniform against that, but that is an awful movie, and I won't hear otherwise. Uh, everyone has the respect to their opinion. Imagine we, we didn't agree on that. That I I don't think we could. Yeah, I don't. We're too similar. We're too we? similar. Oh, I okay. think. Do you know what I mean? Um, Would you ever watch it again? No. But like, just because uh, someone was saying that, what was they saying about? It? They were talking about a movie. They're sorry. They were talking about someone a movie. was talking about a movie. That's my job. <laughs> you are talking about a movie and saying the re. Oh, actually, it was the lads. The Weekly Plant lads were talking about uh, Spider Man. No way home, and it's like when you rewatch it, it's not as good because it's not not in a the theater yeah. and stuff. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Some people, they, everyone can't be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, look, I, it's just not for us, and I just think. It's... But I don't have Apple TV, and I'm not paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on, guys. I'll uh, just derail it. No, that's over. <laughs> If I'm not derailing, you've got to derail it. Someone, you derail so someone's got to be the state of derailment. Yeah. Um, and you know what? So this was really hard to find one to put in. Yeah. But I ended up going with a movie that I really love. I think more people need to see. And it falls into that category of what I said of like, well made, deserves the recognition, even though it's not going to win. And I think, even though I've hyped up another movie like Saltburn, I don't think it goes in here. I think it's Are You There, God, It's Me, Yeah, Margaret. I was going to agree with you. No way! Yeah. Look at us, eh? Yeah. It was the first one that came to mind. I'm so happy we shared notes beforehand so we could pretend this, um, that we yeah, were on the right page about everything. Because I think it does. I think 
are you there god it's me margaret does everything that barbie does but for a younger generation of women i am um, uh, i don't entirely agree okay i think it has more of a, a a sort of a it's less satirical obviously and i think well see this is the thing I no don't like i'm thinking about like say those say those girls those preteen girls who are trying to find their way in in are trying to Do you, and you don't think barbie in any way resonates with them at all no i think barbie does it in a more flashy way i think like because it's a a famous doll Mm-hmm. And because it's based in that kind of Barbie world, okay, I think no, sorry, but you were saying it was a younger generation, yeah. But I don't, okay, fine. But like, the, and I go back to the monologue of of Barbie is about women of that age of like the working age of like, yeah, I suppose, yeah. But I'm sure that uh, again, and sorry, I'm not taking it out know. for Barbie. Oh yeah, sorry, no, I, no, I'm sorry, adding no, a win no, with Barbie. Yeah, no, sorry, and just the, no. So the reason why I, I love Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret is. It ha- yes, it obviously has that element of a young girl, you know, growing up in life and trying to figure out what it's all about. But then also you have the mother character dealing with how do yeah. I deal with my mother and then also my daughter. Like, I just think it's such a generational story. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, you have Barbie where you have the Barbie character who's the kid, who's Margaret. Yeah. You have the mother who's America Ferreira. Okay. Dealing with her ch- kid. Yeah. And you have... Yeah, uh, Ken being cool. Rachel McAdams' <laughs> character dealing with her mother. Right, Okay. Which is I, I feel like there's similarities there. Okay. okay. Now again, tipped movies. Yeah, but like, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I just went to see. I also the fact like you have an uh, like a predominantly female cast. You have female director. Yeah, absolutely. From Edge female 17. writer. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. like, I think again, I think it's criminally. I think that yeah. and the Iron Claw for me. I didn't even did I mention it up top? I don't think so. I think I said Saltburn, so I should have included that up top actually. Yeah. I think Saltburn, Iron Claw. No, sorry, Iron Claw and I there God's me Margaret, I think are the two biggest movies that have been slow yeah. this year. Because yeah. I think those were the two movies that deserved the most recognition that they didn't initially get from release. Yeah. Because That's they all don't have Barry Kogan getting his kid out and dancing around the house. <laughs> With that song. <laughs> With that song. Is that it? I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so so what do you mean? So for Best Picture, you reckon it's going... <laughs> we got slightly derailed there. We're both picking and predicting Oppenheimer yeah. and we're both evicting Kill it, it, of the Flying Moon. Yeah, yeah I think so. Unless... Maestro is shorter than Killers of the Flower Moon. Maestro is shorter than Killers of the Flower Moon. No. Right, okie dokie. Uh, that's everything, isn't it? I think it is. Kill up, Well, We look. didn't talk about Best Editing, Gary. Yeah, well, see, if I put that in, you'd be like, Gary, come on. I have places to be, even yeah. though... Although, how long is this one? This It's uh, like an hour and a bit. I'll, I'll cut, I'll cut yeah, some stuff out, don't yeah, worry. Don't There's worry. stuff about the music I definitely don't need to have, to, yeah. have in there. God's sake, Gary. It's like it's your right. own podcast. I know. Um, but speaking of my own podcast, get out. Uh, no, uh, David, thank you so much <laughs> for coming and doing this. I Actually, this is this has been a fun one. Um, no, it's all, they're all fun, sorry. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, just in the sense that I like going through these and it's uh, it's a bit of a throwback. Yeah. And, uh, yeah it means you can finally like yeah. cap off last year yeah plus the fact that I do like talking about movies that don't get nominated and being like you know go ahead and see them yeah. if there's anything we've mentioned you haven't seen go ahead and see them yeah well, well I'm not yeah, support. absolutely um, and thank you to the listener for listening I suppose and um, be sure to let us know what you think should win and what what you want to win what you think will win and then what you think should have been nominated. Um, if you want to keep up to date with the podcast, you can follow at Reeling the Peers on Instagram or also on the TikTok, the YouTube, and Spotify and Apple podcast. Give us five stars or else. And um, <laughs> David's going to come over here and slap you. And, <laughs> and um, yeah, what else? Uh, yeah, just follow us on those things. Say hello to us and um, tune in next week. I don't know about next week, actually. What's next week? I have no clue. Uh, yeah. Tune in for the next one. It's going to be fun. I promise. <laughs> Bye. Woo!